everybody. Welcome to another Q&A Wednesday here on Jessica Smith TV. Today's topic is something that we reference here a lot on our channel, especially during our workouts, and that's listening to your body. So we're gonna tackle the question of how you actually listen to your body. So a lot of these tips come from my personal experience, but also experiences I've had working with clients and students over the years in fitness and as a wellness coach. So I think one of the most important things that we can learn is that our body is constantly sending us signals and messages. So we live in this high tech world where many of us are wearing trackers all the time and those trackers are giving us tons of feedback and information about our body and what's happening to it. And I think we're sort of losing touch with actually what's going on internally with our systems. While a tracker is fantastic and it can give you estimated counts on how many calories you're burning, how many steps you're taking every day, even how deep a sleep you're getting every night, it's still important that we continually check in with our body and all the signals and messages that it sends to us on a daily basis. So let's talk about listening to your body during a workout, for example. So you'll hear me say that a lot in our routines, you know, make sure you're listening to your body as we go. And what I mean by that is pay attention to how something feels to you. Now, everybody is different and our body signals are different as well. So it's important that you really start to learn about your body, your needs, and what your limitations really are. Now, it's my personal belief that during a workout, you don't wanna be pushing yourself to the point where you feel like you're about to pass out or throw up. Now, I know there's a lot of experts out there and fitness trainers that would disagree with that, and they really wanna push you to that point. I don't personally believe in that. I think that those kind of things are your body's alarm signals saying, whoa, 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 this is way too much for us. Our system is not ready to handle this. Again. That's my personal belief and philosophy, so you'll see that here in our workouts on our channel. So as we're going through a workout, I always encourage you during more intense workouts to go to what I call your edge, which is kind of pushing and challenging yourself to that point, but not overdoing it to the point where you start to feel like you're either going to throw up or pass out. To me, that's going beyond your current capabilities and not in a good way. That's overtaxing your system. We, of course, want to challenge your system so it gets stronger and more fit, but you don't want to overdo it and burn yourself out. If you've ever done a really super intensive workout, notice how you feel afterwards. Oftentimes, if it was something beyond your current capabilities, you're probably gonna feel really wiped out, tired, and probably like just laying on the couch for the rest of the day, which really isn't gonna help your overall fitness or wellness level if all you wanna do is just lay on the couch and watch TV all day long after that really strenuous workout. So when we talk about listening to your body when it comes to eating, I believe that it's really important to choose food based on how your body feels too. Now a lot of you will say, okay, but what do I do if my body's telling me I want pizza and chips all the time? Well, if you really start listening to your body's true signals, you might find that's not at all what it's actually asking for. You know, a lot of times it's hard to decipher if we're really craving a food or a feeling or sometimes we're just plain tired. You know, it's funny, a lot of times people ask me, you know, if I have to work out, I have to do it super early in the morning, so I have to get up at 4.30 before I go to work to fit it in. Should I do the workout or should I get sleep? And my surprising answer is sleep. I always value sleep first over exercise, and there's a lot of good reasons why. If you're not giving your body enough time to rest and recover, you're A, not gonna have the energy that you need for your workout, let alone the rest of your day, but studies show that we're more inclined to eat and crave fattier, high calorie foods when we're sleep deprived. So getting sleep is truly important, and this ties back into eating. So if you find yourself constantly craving these high fat, high calorie foods, your body's probably telling you something. So again, it's another time to take a moment and just really listen to what your body is trying to tell you. It may not be telling you that it wants pizza, but it might be saying, you know what? You are running on all cylinders and you've been doing this for a long time and you're 
tired. So it might be time to really evaluate and make sure that you're taking good care of your body through getting things like enough sleep every night, getting enough water, making sure you're hydrated, and that you're eating foods that really work well for your body. I don't talk a lot about different diets and eating plans here because I truly don't believe there is one size fits all for everybody. I always encourage you to listen to your body and find what works best for you. Certain people will respond really well to certain types of foods and others may not. So that's again, another great opportunity to just tune in after you eat a meal and see how you feel. If you feel sluggish, tired, you know, lethargic, it might not be the right type of food or the right amount for your body to handle. So just see how often you can really tune into your body and its signals, whether you're working out or choosing what to eat or determining whether or not you're getting enough sleep, listening to your body can be a really crucial element to any health and wellness plan. So I encourage you to do it as often as you can and I'll remind you to do that throughout our workouts, but also just make sure you're doing it throughout the day. And the more often that you do it, the more you'll get to know your body's signals and messages and really be able to determine what kinds of messages it's sending to you. So let me know, guys. I love to have discussions with you out there. Let me know if you're able to listen to your body, what kind of things you've learned about yourself over the years as you've developed that skill. I'd love to hear from you. So if you would, share some of your insights in the comments below. And of course, I love to help answer your questions too. So if you have a question that I can answer for you in an upcoming Q&A Wednesday, please also leave it in the comments below and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thanks as always guys for tuning in, remembering to like and share your favorite videos. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next week for another Q&A Wednesday. Take care everybody.